Support for this podcast and the following message come from Money Mind from Prudential, a podcast powered by your financial behavior. Hear insights from financial psychologists, experts, and more. Download and subscribe to Money Mind wherever you find podcasts and learn more at slate.com slash money mind. Hey, everybody. Guess what? Ask Me Another is headed down south. On September 13th, we'll be in Nashville at the War Memorial Auditorium with super special guest country singer Martina McBride. And on September 27th, we're in Dallas at the Majestic Theater. Tickets and information on how to be a contestant are at amatickets.org. Game on. Thanks so much for listening to Ask Me Another. And guess what? There's another great way to listen to our show on your next road trip, NPR One. It's an app for your phone, kind of like Pandora, but for public radio. And it's full of news, podcasts, including this very show you're listening to right now. So whenever you're ready to listen, NPR One has something great just for you. Find it on your app store, NPR One. Warning. The following content has been deemed inappropriate for the radio. It may also be inappropriate for children, offices, or sensitive grandparents. Please put on your headphones. From NPR and WNYC, coming to you from the Bell House in beautiful Brooklyn, New York, it's NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia. Ask me another. Here are your hosts, Jonathan Colton and Faith Saley. <laughs> Thank you very much, Art. Thanks, everybody. Faith, hello. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm completely honored to be here. Well, we're delighted to have you as well. Faith is sitting in for Ophira this week while, while Ophira is on vacation. I want to say that your beard sounds bigger on the radio. <laughs> that is not a criticism. No, I wouldn't take it as one. I take that as a compliment. It's, uh, everybody likes a man who sounds like he has a big beard. <laughs> So thank you very much. You're welcome. Ten lucky contestants are here to play our nerdy games, but only one will win our Ask Me Another prize provided by our VIP guest. You know him from such critically acclaimed comedies as Arrested Development, Mr. Show, and most recently, the increasingly poor decisions of Todd Margaret. Our very important puzzler is David Cross. <laughs> our first game is called Hey, Mr. Cow. And here to play it are Abby Loomis and Drew Buxbaum. Hello. All right, Abby and Drew, if you could keep one pet that wasn't a standard pet, so go totally unconventional, what would it be? Drew? Um, well, if I was going for cute, it would be an Ewok. Oh. Um, but if I was going for, like, ferocious guard-type pet and companion, I would go with a Wookiee. <laughs> Okay, now, well, Drew, I I'm turning to, to you on the sci-fi I, stuff. I, I, I just have to tell you, both of those creatures have their own languages and their own cultures. Yes, I know. And their own families, and I don't think it's cool to keep them as pets. That's Agre just my agreed, thing. Agreed, agreed. Abby, what unconventional pet would you have? So I have a perfect little dog named Louise, and she doesn't bark ever. Except for once when she saw this Galapagos tortoise. So I feel like that could be very entertaining to have, to see kind of what she's like when, when provoked. Did you take Louise to the Galapagos? No, this was in um, the, a backyard <laughs> in Florida. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Jonathan, you have a pet? Uh, I have a, yeah, I have a rat. Wait, for real? Yeah, for real, I have a rat. Um, on purpose? Yeah. <laughs> They live in yeah, New York. You have to ask. Well, there are rats that live in our house that we try to kill with poison, and then there's the rat that we keep in a cage and pet. It's a little confusing, I admit. In this quiz, we'll address you by an animal name, and the answer will be a horrible slash awesome pun that includes the noise that animal makes, okay? So, for example, if we said, Hey, Mr. Cow, what was the 2002 Broadway musical directed by Twyla Tharp? Featuring choreography to a bunch of Billy Joel songs, the answer, of course, would be moving out. So ring in when you know the answer, and the winner will move on to our final round at the end of the show. You ready? Uh, yes. Hope so. Here we go. <laughs> hey, Mr. B, what's that popular social media and news website with sections titled OMG, Cute, 
and fail. That would be Drew. Buzzfeed. Wow. Yes, that's exactly right. And you really committed to the B sound. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Mr. Dog. What do you call the fibrous parts of vegetables that you eat to help your digestion? Abby. Ruffage. Ruffage, yes. Nice. <laughs> hey, Mr. Horse. According to the last line of a famous poem by Robert Frost, what do good fences make? Abby. Good neighbors. Yeah. Neighbors. Even better. The same answer, Nailed but it. a better one in some ways, yes. Hey, Mr. Cobra, ancient aliens, American pickers, and pawn stars are among the series broadcast on what cable TV network? Drew. History. Exactly, the History Channel. Hey, Mr. Owl, if you were flying along the southern edge of Lake Mead, you'd easily spot what giant concrete structure spanning the Colorado River? Oh, Drew. Um, I would guess the Hoover Dam. Yes, and you would uh, guess correctly. Whew, yes. Thank God. <laughs> Give us an extra whoo on the end. I really like the idea that there are all these uh, animals who are experts <laughs> in various topics, like what, what cable networks You just show. have to ask them. You just we have don't to think of asking the animals If we enough. could talk to the animals. Someday. What does an Ewok sound like? Hey, Mr. Ewok, what does an Ewok sound like, you guys? Yub, yub. Yub, yub? <laughs> all right, that's a cliche and a stereotype, but I understand <laughs> Hey, Mr. Cat, what song about the virtues of baseball asks you to buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack? Drew. Take me out to the ball game. That's right. <laughs> All right, this is your last clue. Hey, Mr. Platypus. Just kidding. Oh, God, I was like, <laughs> what do they say? <laughs> hey, Mr. Sheep. What's that 2007 high school buddy film starring Jonah Hill and Michael Sarah? Abby. Super bad. Nice. That was super good. It was. All right, puzzle guru Art Chung, please tell us how our contestants fared. Hey, Mr. Cow, Drew is moving on to the final round at the end of the show. Our next game is called Games Fictional People Play, and here to play it are Christy Sveck and Jordan Belts. <laughs> Christy, I have been given to understand that you once won an all-expenses-paid trip to Montana courtesy of the Philip Morris Corporation. That, that is true, yes. What a wonderful fairy tale of a story. Did you, <laughs> did you find a golden cigarette in a box? No, no. It was a, a random drawing, and my sister and I uh, ended up going there for four days. Montana, is that, uh, is that Marlboro country by any chance? Apparently it is now. I mean, it was, it was really beautiful. I mean, smoking aside, it was really, really <laughs> fun. <laughs> Wait, so when all the expenses were paid, were you also given tons of cigarettes? I think we got five packs when <laughs> we got there for four days. Um, that seems like a lot of packs. Luggage, all the outdoor clothing we needed, boots, cowboy hats. Um, How about dry cleaning pills? Were uh, they paid for? No, not that. No. The, the wonderful, generous people of Philip Morris Corporation. <laughs> yeah. Jordan, I have been told that you hate being wrong, and you are known for never losing an argument even when you are actually wrong. You sound like a delightful young man. <laughs> it also tells me that you are an attorney. Which surprises me. <laughs> it all makes sense now, right? It does. It all comes together. Why, yeah. do, you, why do you hate being wrong so much? Well, it, it's great in my professional career. Um, when I'm in court, you can just sort of beat your opponent into submission um, with facts or made-up facts. But You're also uh, at a uh, quiz show right now. You, it's entirely possible you're going to get something wrong. I, I will convince you that I am not incorrect. And well, we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> this game is about 
Uh, well, it's a game about games. Uh, the twist is that the games we're talking about are from works of fiction. So think Quidditch from Harry Potter. And of course, although Quidditch was created by J.K. Rowling, thanks to the nerds, it is now a real sport <laughs> where you can run around on a field with a broomstick between your legs. <laughs> Finally. People really do that? I, yes, they do. It's called Quidditch. Ring in when you know the answer, and the winner will move on to the final round at the end of the show. Here we go. These grisly, young, adult-oriented dystopian games feature Jennifer Lawrence fighting other teenage tributes to the death. Christy? The Hunger Games? That is right. That is right. Are you a fan? Love it. Love it, really? Yeah. Does that, I mean, is this a dumb question? Is, who's your favorite? Does everybody root for Katniss? Um, Katniss, that, right? I guess. Right. She's the one that survives, so I mean... <laughs> I guess... Yeah. You'd be I a fool to root that. for anybody else. <laughs> Trey Parker and Matt Stone starred in a 1998 movie about this made-up pro sport combining hoops with America's pastime and a lot of trash talk. Jordan, now you your big chance to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Basketball. Basketball, that's right. Did not even have to convince us. <laughs> yeah, didn't have to convince us. Still not wrong, Jordan. In that way, you're doing great. There's still time. Yeah. <laughs> this board game is awful. It makes vines grow all over your house, and wild animals appear from nowhere. Players get sucked into the game board for 26 years, and the gameplay is just boring dice rolling. Pass. Jumanji. Christy. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. All right, we'll give you the game. You tell us what TV show it's from. True American is 50% drinking game, 50% life-size Candyland. If you're roommates with Zoe Deschanel, it's the perfect way to drink yourself through tricky relationship issues. Christy. The new girl. You got it. If you swing by 10 forward... You might find Counselor Troy and Commander Data playing this game, involving bishops, rooks, and a three-tiered game board. Thumbs are so poised. Christy. Star Trek chess. It's a fantastic guess. <laughs> Puzzle guru, will we accept that answer? No. No. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, Jordan. War games? I'm not going to accept that either, are we? <laughs> but you can, you can uh, convince the, the court here. I, I have nothing. <laughs> Please argue your case, sir. <laughs> I think war games involve chess. Um, Christy, you're so close. Tri-dimensional chess from Star Trek and Star Trek The Next Generation. Right? right. Oh. This is your last clue. Matthew Broderick plays a young hacker who unlocks a set of computer games, including chess and tic-tac-toe. Jordan, Jordan's got his thumb ready. It's all you. He I settles on global thermonuclear war, a strange game in which the only winning move is not to play. What movie is this game from? War Games. Yes, you are correct. Art Chung, how did our contestants do? Well, Christy, you're moving on to the final round at the end of the show. Coming up, we'll find out what poor decisions keep comedian David Cross up at night. So stick around. I'm Faith Saley, and this is Ask Me Another from NPR. Let's take a moment to thank and share a message from our sponsor, True TV. Misconceptions, myths, and marketing ploys are all around us, but thankfully, Adam Conover is back with new episodes of True TV's Adam Ruins Everything to reveal the awful truth about everything that you take for granted. The electric car won't stop climate change, and buying a home is a terrible investment. Divorce is actually good for society. It's a comedy that will make you see the world a little differently. So check out Adam Ruins Everything, Tuesday at 10 on True TV. Hey, thanks so much for listening to Ask Me Another. And if you like more podcasts in your ear holes now, you should check out How to Do Everything. It's a survival guide for all of life's trials and tribulations like bear attacks, romantic conundrums, and the conundrum of a romantic bear attack. 
There's a chance you'll find it helpful, but you'll definitely enjoy hearing about other people's problems. Find Mike and Ian now on the NPR One app at npr.org slash podcasts. You're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR and WNYC. I'm Faith Saley, sitting in for Ophira Eisenberg. I'm here with Jonathan Colton and puzzle guru Art Chung. And please welcome, from the increasingly poor decisions of Todd Margaret, David Cross. Hi, everybody. <laughs> David Cross... Uh, the Increasingly Poor Decisions of Todd Margaret is starting its third season. Except now it's just called Todd Margaret. There's is that... A, there's it, a reason for that. Oh, okay. Uh, what is the reason? It's it, initially completely different. Initially completely different. That's starting, all, you mean starting... Can say. Really? You're going to be cryptic? Because, I, I well, have to be. It's a, it's a crazy thing. It's a very trippy, puzzly. Well, meta. sure, because, well, in the show, a little background. Your character moves to London to, to work for an energy drink company called Thunder Muscle. Yeah. Um, and by the end of the second season, where we left off, you've set off a nuclear explosion that blows up the world. Yes. Right. So at the time, were you thinking, there's no season three? Oh, absolutely. That, right. that was the. I. Oh, I was very vocal about it, and uh, I would have some attitude when people would be like, uh, hey, are there, is there going to be a third season? And after answering that question 500 times, like, how? How could there be a third season? The, the whole world blows up. And then, uh, you know, it did okay when it came out, nothing, nothing major. But then I, a couple of years later, as it, when it got on Netflix, it just, you know, mushroomed, and uh, uh, now there's a whole big fan base for it. And, and because of that, uh, IFC came back to me last year and said, so what do you think? And, and I said, no, I, no, I don't know what that is. I, that makes no sense to me. How could it work? But I said out of, out of you know, professional common courtesy, I will approach the other writers. I'll, I'll ask them if they have any ideas. And you know, I was like, I don't want to do a prequel or you know, post-apocalyptic thing. That's silly. And I sent an email out and then Roughly an hour later, one of the writers, uh, this guy Mark Chapel, who's a great writer, came up with the most brilliant idea. So good, and I was like, "You can't share it with us." No, 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 I can't. No, <sighs> trust me, uh, way more than the first two. This really pays off. But hopefully, you won't be ahead of it. You'll, uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of theories as to what's really going on, what the deal is. But I don't think you'll really know what the real thing is. I believe you. I'm so sorry to be crypt. I, I have no. There's no other, I just can't. <laughs> there's, just, there's no way that I can't give anything away because it, it would, wouldn't be as fun, you know? And, and um, I will say the more familiar you are with the, the first two series, the more you will enjoy the third series because there's all kinds of twists and weird things. That's all. We'll take it. This seems to be a pattern with you. These shows you've been on get canceled only to come back. No, to come back years later. That's like, true. Like Todd Margaret and Mr. Show and in Arrested Development. Not appreciated in my time. And yes, you're ahead of your so time. So what I'm going to do, I've, and that's a, it's a good point, I'm going to have myself killed, but in a way that I can be cryologically, right? Cryopreserved? What is it? Cryogenically, thank you. yeah. There's a certain cryologic to what I said, though. Uh, <laughs> cryogenically preserved. And then I'm just going to wait, like, five or six years, unfreeze myself. And, and collect all like, your hey, Emmys. man, you're awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, most people know you as Tobias Funke sure. on Arrested Development. Now, how much input did you have in creating the character? In the very beginning, I was able to shape the character uh, I was not inten it was not intended to be a regular uh, role. It was just going to be reoccurring. And they, they actually sent me the script to look at uh, Job and Buster. And I did not have a handle on Job at all. I didn't get, you know, and now, and you see Will Arnett, and you're like, oh, of course, perfect. That's exactly what it should be. Uh, but I didn't have a handle on it. But I read the script, and I loved it. But the, the character that I really, I knew immediately, I got it, was Tobias. And I... I kind of pitched him as a cross between uh, 
an Upper East Side erudite Dick Cavett kind of guy, the guy who goes and sees like a Vim Benders film and he's in front of you and, and just at some weird place goes, <laughs> <laughs> like that, you know, that kind of guy. And a cross between that guy and then like a Marin County turtleneck wearing touchy feely, you know, spiritual guy. So I was like, I pitched him as that. And then one thing I was really adamant about, and this was a big argument that we had with Fox was that he would have a mustache. I was like, these guys always have mustaches. <laughs> I, want, I want to have a mustache. And then there was, Fox said no, and there was this whole, this crazy, sh it's a whole other story, but yeah. I had a fight to get the mustache for Tobias. What, were you actually in a room with an executive fighting no, for no, a mustache? Uh, no, I was on set. It was the pilot, and I was on set. I was in hair and makeup, it was like 6 a.m., and I was super cranky. I hadn't gotten a whole lot of sleep. But when this executive came up to me from Fox, they were like, uh, so Gail, uh, the president of Fox, uh, has three comedy rules, and one of them is that no mustaches on men. I'm like, what does that fucking mean? I was so, that makes no sense. What does that mean? Uh, explain. Why? It's just arbitrary. What are you talking about? Um, and we had to go back and forth and back and forth, and they had to wake somebody up. And like, phone, I swear to God, it was 6 a.m. And then, then they came back, I'm not joking, they came back with, okay, you can have the mustache, but it can't be bushy. <laughs> Fine. Great. You win. All right. So I would I, hate to hear her other two rules of comedy. Oh, I remember them. I remember them distinctly. No puffy sleeves. No, like, pirate shirt sl puffy sleeves. Yes. Uh, uh, and no, um, I can't remember if it was baseball caps or hats. It was either hats or baseball caps. It was a comedy rule. Wow. The president of Fox. David Cross, are you ready for your Ask Me Another challenge? I've been ready for like an hour now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it up for David Cross. Now, David. Yes. You have brought your very own opponent. Yes. Yes, I have. Can you please introduce her? Okay. Uh, this next young lady coming to the stage, uh, you might know her from uh, Greece too. Uh, it's my, it's my wife. It's Amber Tamblin, ladies and gentlemen, in Radio Land. It is Amber Tamblin. You may know her from Greece too. I don't think you were born then. I was um, not. No. Uh, two and a half men, Joan of Arcadia, the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, and you're also a poet. Amber. True. So, David and Amber, your appearance here has made us think a lot about poor decisions. <laughs> so we gave our audience a list of some poor decisions, and we asked them to tell us which ones were the poorest. So all you have to do is ring in and tell us how they voted. And if you ring in and you get it wrong, the point automatically goes to your opponent. Oh. Okay. Oh. Good to know. Honey. So Good to know. Think, right. think carefully. Here we go. Which did our audience say is the worst decision? Drunk texting your ex or drunk texting your parent? Ooh. Amber? Parent. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. 64% said ex. I was going to say ex. Yeah, yeah no. I yeah, sure you were. I have drunk texted my mom, um, and that has resulted in pain. Didn't go yeah, so just, well. Nobody should do it, because then you say things that the next morning she's arranged an MRI for you, and you're like, what did I do? And she's like, called David's mom and I texted drunk, all I of her hippie texted friends. I your mom, and... too. That's not, not, a, not the wisest choice. Was it you we'll up? Did you we'll say talk you up? About, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Which... Tattoo did our audience say is more regrettable? A tattoo that says YOLO or a tattoo of Zach from Saved by the Bell? David. I'm going to say it's what I believe, which is because you could claim some sort of irony with Zach. I'm going to say YOLO. There's no way that's not ironic. <laughs> You guessed right, my friend. 63% yeah. of the audience says a tattoo that says YOLO is yeah. way Because you can always go, oh, yeah, I thought it was funny, you know. But YOLO, you can't. 
would be exhausting to spend the rest of your life claiming irony for your Zach tattoo, though. (laughs) Dear Lord. All right, which of these wedding faux pas did our audience say is worse? Proposing at your friend's wedding reception or revealing the bride is pregnant during your wedding toast? David. Uh, uh, Revealing the bride is pregnant. You're absolutely right, 62%. Really, you think? Yeah, that's 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 a thing now. I've been to several weddings. I think that is a thing. Uh, Unless you've experienced that, maybe it would just sound bad. I I think that's terrible, though. That's news that of all the the things in one's life that you you want to have control over, you know, saying it uh, or or revealing it. I think the fact that you're pregnant is is right up there. You know, proposing is pretty bad too, though. I mean, it's awkward and bad, but it's awkward. But the and it takes away from the other people's special night. But I I would like to challenge the audience. Okay, Amber and David, which of these is worse? Eating all you can eat at a buffet or drinking six five-hour energy drinks in one 24-hour period? Uh, I don't think either of them are that bad. I know, is this bad. a trick question? I don't think either one. I mean, if you it's go... sound great. Wait, you're, you're saying it's bad to eat till you're... Yeah, like, eat all you can eat, I think. Eat is... Everything in the all you can eat? Or just all no, you can just, eat. You said eat till you're not hungry all you anymore. Can eat. Yeah, yeah, that's the whole buffet. point of the that thing. Why is that a bad deal? Amber, what's energy your drinks? Yeah, yeah. It- <laughs> I don't think that's that big a deal. Eighty-seven percent of our audience thought it was worse to drink six five-hour energy drinks. Let's do the math. That's like thirty hours worth of drinks in one twenty-four hour period. <laughs> even even the five-hour energy company suggests that you not drink more yeah, than two a day. That's death. <laughs> that's just death. Yeah, that's poisoning yourself. Yeah, it's not just eating a lot of food. I guess you're right. Our Chung, how did our contestants do? I know how we did. Okay. <laughs> well, congratulations, David. You won that round. She's a firecracker. Yeah. Um, David, was that too easy for you? Uh, no, I had to think about it. Okay. I mean, I don't know. Do you want to? Do you want something harder? Do you wanna... Uh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay. This is highly unorthodox, but audience, should we give David another chance? Okay, David. We are going to bring you back later in the show. Let's have a big hand for Amber Tamlin and David Cross. This next game is called The Whatchamacallit, and here to play it are Sergei Tsimbarov and Alexandra Bix. <laughs> Sergei, you are a literary agent, and you told us that you are trying to take up boating. Yeah, it's mostly aspirational. Like, like I think that later in life I would be like a really good eccentric rich person that's into watercraft, like like having like lots of obsolete boats that you need to spend a lot of money on. It sounds like a so great idea. So I think like, yeah. it's important to get started early. Um, so what steps have you taken to in order to take up boating? Like being on more boats, mostly so far. <laughs> that's, that's a good place to start, I but, suppose. But, but but next on the list is trying to learn how to sail. Right, yeah. Alexander, you teach English as a second language at a college in Boston. I do. Yeah, and apparently you frequently bump into famous people, meaning that you literally bump into them? Literally. On purpose? No, not on purpose. I think it's my fault. Like, I think I am clumsy, and I think... So I used to live in New York, so it happened more frequently than it does now in Boston, but I I started making a list once, and it was getting to be a little bit long. Is there... Uh, Who are some of the people? Um, Give us the highlights. Um... I bumped into Whoopi Goldberg um, at Magnolia when that was like a big, that was a thing. Everybody was going to Magnolia. Mm -hmm. I I bumped into Ron Howard. Uh, I bumped into Claire Danes. This is bumping. I bumped into. This is actual bumping. This is bumping. This is not just just I saw them or something. I bumped into Gabriel Byrne, who was not very nice about it. Um, (laughs) Yeah, um, that sounds scary. Yeah, it was a little scary. Everything has a name, even if you don't know it. We're going to give you the names of some everyday things, and you need to tell us what those things are. For example, Faith, which of these things is called a keeper? A car alarm fob? The loop on your belt? 
or the seam on the bottom of a wooden boat? A keeper. I was going to go with the loop on your belt, mm -hmm. but I feel that the seam on the bottom of my boat, or maybe Sergei's boat, one day, one one day. day is calling to me. It's just so specific. You hear the call of it's the sea. Like, yes, yes. Is it that? No, it's not. It's the loop on your belt. Ah! It's a very good guess, though. Ring in when you know the answer, and the winner will move on to the final round at the end of the show. Okay? Here we go. What is an aglet? Is it a plastic sheath at the end of a shoelace, the nose pads on a pair of eyeglasses, or the round knob you wind on a wristwatch? Uh, Sergey. The, the plastic sheath on shoelace. Yes, it is. The plastic sheath at the end of a shoelace. How did you... Yes, applause. Is that a guess, or did you just know? Uh, I, I feel like that was somewhere in there. Somewhere in there, wow. All right. A scroop is the sound of what? Snoring dogs, rustling silk, or dripping water? A scroop. Sergey. Rustling silk? Yeah, wow. What's going on here, Sergey? Uh, what is a tittle? A little red-chested bird? A little dot above a lowercase i? Or a little bikini top? Sergey. The little dot? Yes. What's wow. happening here? <laughs> Sergey. A, a tittle is a little dot above a lowercase i. I gotta, I gotta say, Sergey, I'm glad you're doing well, but it's starting to get a little creepy in here. <laughs> a natiform is something that looks like what? A finger? A nose? A butt? <laughs> Alexandra? Nose? Oh. No? No? No. You're way too mature. <laughs> Sergey, I bet you want to steal. Go ahead and do it. Um, I'm going to guess a butt. Yeah, you're going to guess right. <laughs> a natiform is a butt. Natiform is a butt. Pulled that one right out of your natiform, didn't you, Sergey? <laughs> All right, this is your last question. <laughs> Wowie zowie. <laughs> Petrichor is the smell of what? Rain after a period of dry weather? The plastic covering over furniture? Or newborn kittens? Sergey. Uh, rain after dry weather. <laughs> yes! Of course. Of course. This is crazy. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. You know what, Sergey? I'm going to call you Captain. Uh, I, I don't even really need to do this. Art Chung, how did our contestants do? Well, Sergey's either a hacker or a telepath, because uh, he's going on. He's got them all right. Congratulations, Sergey. You're moving on. And a big round, round of applause for Alexandra. Coming up, I'll sing a song about some very, very small things that are very small. Stick around. I'm Jonathan Colton, and this is Ask Me Another from NPR. Support for Ask Me Another also comes from Whole Foods Market. This week, Whole Foods Market is having sales. But this week isn't really special because every week, Whole Foods Market has sales. They put yellow stickers and signs all over the store so you can find the highest quality food at the best price, including meat and poultry from farmers and ranchers committed to quality and taste. And organic produce grown without toxic pesticides. So keep an eye out for the yellow the next time you shop and visit WholeFoodsMarket.com to see this week's specials. Welcome back to Ask Me Another, NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia. I'm Faith Saley, and I'm here with Jonathan Colton and puzzle guru Art Chung. Please welcome our next contestants, Rebecca Cassis and Jason Ginsberg. <laughs> Guys, what's one thing that you wish came in miniature form? Okay, I was thinking about this. And, and, and everything already that I want in miniature form 
already comes in miniature Such form. as? Marshmallows. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All travel goods. Mm-hmm. Mm. Tissues. Tissue packs. Mm-hmm. Small ones. Right. You know, in the purse. Candies. Can't, candies. Thank you. I'm so old, Jonathan, that I remember before there were fun size candy bars. Do you remember that? Yeah, it was a sad age. You had to eat a giant <laughs> the whole the candy, whole candy bar. bar. What a terrible time for children. <laughs> Jason. I, I have a, a, an 80 pound yellow lab who's kind of up there in age. Mm. And so I have to carry him places. And so now I wish he were a miniature lab. Oh. <laughs> Jason, you are breaking everybody's hearts up here, I gotta tell you. <laughs> Well, they say that good things come in small packages, and I'm living proof of that. In this game, we are celebrating things that are tiny. I will sing a verse from Blink-182's All the Small Things about, yes, some small thing, and you have to tell me what that small thing is. This is a very complicated song and a pretty complicated concept for a game, so I want to make sure you're both clear on the instructions. I need verbal confirmation. Verbal confirmation. Yes. Yes. (laughs) I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. (laughs) Ring in when you know the answer, and the winner will move on to our final round at the end of the show. Here we go. All the small things by Matt Tris brings a pair recite. Don't let it bite. Rebecca. Bedbug. Bedbug is correct. You get it now, Jason? Yes. Okay. (laughs) Just need that verbal confirmation. (laughs) These words connect. That is their effect. There's and and there is or. And also but and yet and for. Jason. Conjunctions? Conjunctions is correct. the big chorus, everybody. Big winter storm, ice crystals swarm, fluffy and light, turn the ground white. Jason. Snowflakes. Snowflakes, you got it. Yeah. Is this going to get smaller? Are we going to have a verse about fractals? Is this going to get smaller and smaller? It's going to get smaller and smaller. We're all going to get super small and disappear. Here we go. I said... I could carry some wood. I got a fragment in my skin. Gotta stick the tweezers in. Jason. Splinter? Splinter, that's right. I got my own place. I don't have much space. It feels like a womb. There's only one room. Jason. Studio apartment? Studio apartment. That's right. For all the New Yorkers out there. Rebecca. No, 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 no. I'm sorry, that's not the answer we were looking for. <laughs> Do you want to steal? You want to steal? Hey, a verbal pause? No, I'm just kidding. That's not a real question. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see what you guys would do. <laughs> Goes in my eyes, takes a, a few tries. Now I can see no specs for me. Rebecca. Contact lenses. Contact lenses is correct. (laughs) This is your last clue. A tiny dog breed, loyal indeed. They barely grow. They're from Mexico. (laughs) Rebecca. Chihuahua. Absolutely, Chihuahua, yes. They were well matched. They were very well matched. Archung, what what happened in that game? It was a close game, but Jason, congratulations. You're moving on to the final round. (laughs) 
Our next game is called Unpresidentially Yours, and here to play it are Marshall Finch and David Cross. Uh, Marshall, you grew up in Virginia. I did. And your dad liked to take you to multiple politicians' funerals in D.C. when you were a kid. Uh, all of them that I can remember. The last one was in 2008. It was Tim Russert, but we went to Tip O'Neill's funeral. Uh-huh. We went to, like, there was a Kennedy that died in a skiing accident, and they had a service, because he wasn't from D.C., but they had a service, and my dad made us go, and he collects all the, like, mass, like, cards that they give you, because they're all Catholic ceremonies. So my dad just has, like, a trading card collection of, like, funeral <laughs> cards from, like... Which, wow. uh, which yeah. funeral was the most fun? Uh... I'm going to take that as an honest question. I'm going to say Tim Russert because everyone was there and it was like, I don't know. It was a party, party. It was kind of a party, yeah. Yeah. It was was like the tent at an awards show. I must imagine that's what it's like. I will Totally, it's like uh, Tim Russert's funeral. That's it. Uh, uh, Way before Tim Russert died, that was the standard. It it meant you were having a good time. Yeah. Yeah. This Uh, is better than Tim Russert's funeral. (laughs) It's true. It's a standard Hollywood thing. Um, This game is a celebration of democracy. The never-ending presidential election cycle is what we're talking about here. Candidates travel around the country talking to voters, the press, to babies. It is fraught with peril because at any moment, a candidate could say the one thing that dooms his or her presidential hopes. So we'll give you an unfortunate quotation, and you tell us which presidential or vice presidential candidate said it. And the winner will move on to our final round at the end of the show. Okay, here we go. During my service in the United States Congress, I took the initiative in creating the Internet. David. Al Gore. That's right. That's right. He's never heard the end of that. There are 47% of the people who believe that they are victims, who believe that they are entitled to health care, to food, to housing, to you name it. My job is to not worry about those people. Marshall. Mitt Romney? Mitt Romney is correct. There's Marshall. Marshall. In 1988, this candidate said, follow me around. I don't care. I'm serious. If anybody wants to put a tail on me, go ahead. They'll be very bored. Unfortunately, turns out he was having an extramarital affair. Gary. Marshall? Oh. Gary Hart. Oh. That was a bit of team effort there. All but right. but you, are, I, yeah. you are right, Marshall, I, and you started out right, David. <laughs> right, sorry. How about a little extra credit? Do you remember the name of the lady? Oh, oh. God. It was something really, like, that would be the name of a... It was <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It was... What was it? It was, it, it was like Sonia Don- Summer. No. no. Don- Donna? Donna? It was Donna, Donna, Donna Summers. It was Donna, Donna Summers, Summer. yes. It was uh, Donna Rice. Donna Rice. And it Donna was on Rice. a boat called Monkey, Monkey Business. Business. Very good. Yeah. Ah. Yep. What if it was Donna Summer? That's <laughs> Not only are we going to New Hampshire, we're going to California and Texas and New York, and we're going to South Dakota and Oregon and Washington and Michigan, and then we're going to Washington, D.C. to take back the White House. Yeah! <laughs> David. Ha- Howard Dean. Howard Dean, yes. That was good, Jonathan. That's pretty good Howard Dean, right? Who had a senior moment at a 2011 GOP presidential debate when he said, three agencies of government when I get there that are gone? Commerce, education, and the... What's the third one there? Let's see. I can't... Sorry. Oops. Marshall. Rick Perry. That is right. This is, I think this is neck and neck. What 2004 Democratic nominee said this about his support for funding military operations in Iraq and Afghanistan? I actually did vote for the $87 billion before I voted against it. Marshall. John Kerry. That's correct. (laughs) What vice president had an epic fail on the re-election trail when he spelled a certain vegetable P-O-T-A-T-O-E? David. Dan Quayle. That's right. This is your last clue. What Republican candidate raised eyebrows in 2015 when he criticized Senator John McCain, saying 
He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? <laughs> David. Uh, Trump. It was Trump, yes, you are correct. <laughs> Art Chung, uh, what happened in this game? We have a tie. Oh, my. Yeah. Marshall and David just high-fived. All right, here's your tiebreaker. Oh. What vice presidential nominee really didn't say this, but we wish she did? I can see Russia from my house. <laughs> David. Sarah Palin. That is correct, and you're moving on to the final round at the end of the show. All right. Nice job, Marshall. Nice job. In 1844, the Democrats were split. The three nominees for the presidential candidate. Martin Van Buren, a former president and an abolitionist. James Buchanan, a moderate. Louis Cass, a general and expansionist. From Nashville came a dark horse riding up. He was James K. Polk, Napoleon of the Stump. That was Jonathan Colton with James K. Polk. That's right. Thank you. Now we're going to crown this week's big winner. Let's bring back Drew, Christy, Sergey, Jason, and David to play our Ask Me One More final round. All right, Art, take it away. In this final round, every correct answer will be one of Modern Library's top 100 English language novels of all time, as voted on by both librarians and the public. As a clue, we'll give you a phrase that's synonymous or nearly synonymous with the title. So, for example, if we said a goodbye to guns, grenades, and missiles, that would be a farewell to arms. We're playing the spelling bee style, so one wrong answer and you're out. You only have a few seconds to give me that answer. The last person standing is our Ask Me Another grand winner. For your prize, you receive a bag of great IFC swag, some leftover broccolini that David Cross and Amber Tamblin had down the street, <laughs> And as a nod to Arrested Development, a pair of cut-off jean shorts autographed by David. <laughs> Suitable for you or the never-nude person in your life. And they may have been worn by me in the shower. <laughs> Here we go. Drew, transparent guy. The Invisible Man. That is correct. Christy, the noise and the anger. The sound and the fury. You got it. <laughs> Sergey, ruler of the winged insects. Uh, Lord of the Flies. That is correct. <laughs> Jason, a book of maps slightly lifted its shoulders. <laughs> I'm going to have to give you three seconds. Jason, I'm sorry, step aside. David Cross. Atlas Shrugged. That is correct. Thank you, Jason. Jason is out. We're back to Drew. Courageous Modern Earth. A Brave New World. That is right. <laughs> Christy, the nude and the deceased. The naked and the dead. That's right. <laughs> Sergey, a space enclosed by four walls with a landscape. Uh, room with a view. Right. <laughs> David, the year that Los Angeles last hosted the Summer Olympics. <laughs> 1984. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Drew, indigenous male child. Uh, native son. Wow, yep. That's right. <laughs> Christy, 12 a.m.'s kids. Midnight's Children? That's right. <laughs> Sergey, the Zinfandels of Acrimony. Uh, Grace of Wrath. Wow, you got it. He's really good. He's really good. David, the circulatory muscle is a solitary pursuer. 
The heart is a lonely hunter. Yes. <laughs> Drew, a pathway to the country where Mumbai is located. Pathway Three through. seconds. Um, the way to India. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I can't accept that. Let's see if Christy knows. Uh, the road to India? No, I'm sorry, that's not it either. <laughs> Sergey? Uh, journey to India? Oh, no! <laughs> David Cross, if you know the answer. Wait, can you repeat it? Sure. <laughs> a pathway to the country where Mumbai is located. Oh, man. A passage to India. You got it! Wow. David Cross, I you're our big winner. I declined the gifts. It's not fair. <laughs> it's simply not fair. David Cross, everybody. That's our show. Thank you so much for playing, everybody. Check out our podcast on iTunes or Stitcher. You can find us on Facebook or Twitter at NPR Ask Me Another. And come see us live. Go to amatickets.org. Our guest host is Faith Saley. My name anagrams to Hail Fiesta. Our puzzle guru is Art Chung. Narc Thug. Additional puzzle writing by Mark Halpin, Glenn McDonald, Adam Markowitz, Scott Ross, and senior writers Kyle Beakley and Karen Lurie. Ask Me Another is produced by Denny Shin, Lena Misitsis, Mike Katzif, Travis Larchuk, and our intern, Julia Melfi. I'm Jail Fuel. Along with Anya Grunman. We are recorded by Damon Whittemore, Noriko Okabe, and Jeff O'Neill. Ask Me Another was created by Eric Newsom and Jesse Baker. We'd like to thank our home in Brooklyn, New York, The Bell House. Hot Peel Blues. And our production partner, WNYC. I'm Thou Jolta Cannon. Jonathan Colton. And this was Ask Me Another from NPR. Next time on Ask Me Another, Cameron Esposito tells us why on earth she would marry another comedian. Oh, uh, because I want my life to be a living nightmare. <laughs> I want to be with somebody that's a little bit challenging, especially now that my marriage is legal. It's like, pff, yeah. what am I going to spend the rest of my time fighting for? You know what I mean? <laughs> Join me, Ophira Eisenberg, for NPR's Hour of Puzzles, Word Games, and